Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Vega Bomber and welcome to Vega Bomber Land. So, over Memorial Day weekend, I did go see a movie and that movie was, no, no, it, it wasn't Angry Birds. It was definitely X-Men Apocalypse. And let me tell you, I know that the critics had their own view of this film, but I gotta say, I disagreed with the critics. I actually thought this movie was good. I would have definitely given it a higher rating than that. But at any rate, let me just tell you what I liked about the film. So to me, the strongest part of this film was the first half. The first half of this film gave you some solid dramatic acting to go along with all the punching, kicking, fighting, and swirl of kicks and all that great stuff. The idea that uh, James McAvoy's character, Professor X, is still kind of, well, he kind of is struggling with the idea that his way is still the best way to go, which is non-violent. Basically, Professor X is really Martin Luther King Jr. And Magneto was really like Malcolm X. They just kind of switched the X, put one over here, one over there. But at any rate, Magneto, ah, oh, Michael Fassbender, love that guy. That guy can act his butt off, and in this movie he does. He gives more range to a anti-hero, hero slash villain, whatever Magneto is, he gives him that. He gives him that gravitas. In this movie, you get that gut punch when you see what happens to him in this movie. Oh, and by the way, this is definitely non-spoiler, so I'm gonna talk as vague as possible, but still try to keep it enthusiastic because, well, you know, I'm going to. But the performances, again, that's probably one of the greatest things about this film. I think that each actor turned in a pretty good performance where it was necessary. Oscar Isaac, oh my gosh, him trying to play Apocalypse, and when I say trying to play, this is what I mean. How do you play a ridiculous godlike villain without it looking too cartoonish and goofy? That's what Oscar Isaac had to do. And you know me, I'm all about the villains in these movies. And I'll say this, I'm split on him as the villain. Now, I'll say his performance was great. I think he added enough gravitas to it to make him as believable as it could be. And I think his menace was good, because you have to be a threat, you have to be a menace. If you're not that, you're not a good villain. And I think that part was great about him as Apocalypse as a villain. The tough part would probably be just what was he given to do in the script and the way the character was written. And I think that's probably the bigger part, but let me hold off on that. Let me just talk about what's great about this film. So I would say number one, easily the performances. So I think James McAvoy, Fassbender, um, I think the new mutants that you get to see in this film, so you get to see Night, the actor that played Nightcrawler, um, also the new kid that was playing Cyclops did a good job, and I thought the girl who was playing Storm now, she also did a good job. Uh, Jubilee was in the film, didn't do a whole bunch, and the actor that played, what's her name, Sophie, that ended up playing Jean Grey, and I think they did okay. I think they did an alright job for what they were trying to do. But this movie, yo, if I was to give another props to this film, it would have to be that there was some dramatic weight to this film. When there's dramatic weight, you can get pulled into the story. I was pulled into the story. This movie very easily could have just been X-Men fighting other X-Men, like we've already seen Avenger fighting another Avenger, and we've seen Batman fight Superman. It could have very easily just spinned out into one of those deals. And of course they do do that, but what separates it is there's weight here. You do understand some things about Magneto, and you understand some more things about um, Professor X, and then their, their relationship as trying to, you know, Professor X never really given up on Magneto, even though Magneto tries and tries and tries to do the right thing, but just stuff just goes bad for him. And who can't relate to that? There's some of us that just seems like things just go bad in threes. That's like Magneto's life. So the way they carried that across was excellent. So the emotional tugs was there, the feels were there, and when that happens, I can invest. When you get me invest in the movie, I can let go a lot of other things. Again, I would say Oscar Isaac's performance, again, he was asked to do a lot with what would have been pretty goofy, but he made it work. It's not the best Marvel villain, not the best villain in all of cinematic history, but nonetheless, I would say he was serviceable. He did what he needed to do in the film. Now let's talk about what you really want to talk about. What was the problems with this film? Because you know, that's how some of us think, right? Some, some of us are pretty critical thinkers, which is not necessarily a bad thing unless you're criticizing just to criticize, but hopefully this is founded and you'll see that. Um, the 
first half of the movie was great, so one of the weak parts of this, or one of the eye rolls to me, would be that the second half just couldn't hold up to the weight that was built in the first half. The first half was so good, was so good, that the second half was going to have to really bring it home, and unfortunately, it didn't. I'd say another thing about this was that in the second half of the film, we saw a lot of the CGI. It started to become the CGI fest, and you could see areas where it really wasn't that great, and really you just wondered why. You know, you just looked at it and thought, that's the best you're going to have Magneto do with just all the swirly things. That's the best you're going to have Apocalypse do with all the swirly CGI. I mean, it was just, after a while, it just seemed, I don't know, uninspiring. And, and then the final part would be the conclusion, you know, the big finale, the big last hurrah at the end of this film. It was just anticlimactic. Yeah, they came back, they did what they needed to do to kind of rectify the situation, and there were some pretty awesome moments in there. But I, I just, uh, it, 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 it just wasn't enough. It, it just left you going, okay, movie's cool, could have been better. But it was cool. You know, we only have two ratings here in Vega Bottom Land. A movie's either blowing up, which is a good thing, or a movie gets blown up, meaning detonated, because it doesn't no longer need to exist like an old decrepit building. But this movie, I would say, is definitely blowing up. You can go to this movie and you can have some fun. Again, I'll just tell you, it's not the greatest film in the world. It's not going to set records in terms of what like Civil War did, or Avengers, or even Iron Man 3, and not that Iron Man 3 was good, but you know what I'm saying. But this movie still is entertaining, and because of the first half being so strong, I think the first half is enough to carry you through it. And that's pretty much the most I can say about that. Anyway, it's your boy Vega Bomber, and I'm out. By the way, Plot Holes and Nitpicks is coming up soon. I would almost say next, but it's coming up soon. Also, we've got to talk about Zemo because it seems that people don't quite understand the character of Zemo in Civil War. So I'm going to break that down. Anyway, I'm out! Home run.